Welcome to Grays of Westminster's first instalment of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. If you've been looking to buy a manual focus lens at some point in the future, we thought we'd lay out for you the things that you can look for to make sure that you're getting a good deal and also a lens that will last you a good long time. I have some examples here of lenses that are both good, bad and maybe a little bit ugly. So I'm going to show you what to look for when buying a manual focus lens. Manual focus lenses are relatively easy to check because there's not many moving parts and there isn't too much going on apart from the manual focus ring and the aperture ring. So the first thing to check is the optics. Make sure that the glass has no scratches on it. Those might not be visible in uh, natural light so you may want to use a torch just to have a look at the optics and make sure, that, sure there's no scratches. The next thing that you want to do is check the internal optics. Now that usually means putting it up to your eye, although I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's fairly obvious. But if you take a torch and shine it through, then you'll be able to see whether or not there's dust inside the lens. A little bit of dust is always expected because these lenses have moving parts and they will take in a bit of dust as the lens moves out like this and back in like that. But too much dust is worth avoiding. So a little bit of dust is expected, but not too much. The other thing to look at is the aperture mechanism. Now, if you look through there, you can see a closed iris. If I open up the aperture, you can see that it opens and closes, hopefully. <laughs> and the quick way to test if the lens does a quick return, which means that when it's on the camera, the camera will be able to open and close the aperture very quickly, is to just flip it round and then you've got a lever here which very rapidly opens and closes it. If for any reason there's a bit of stickiness when you do this it usually means there's oil on the ap aperture blades. I've got a lens which has slightly oily aperture blades which I'm going to try and show you. So in here this with a closed aperture has faint lines on the iris. Now some of them look very wet and you can usually see when you open and close them that the oil gets much worse. But with this one let me point the torch in it and see if that will... Can you see that? Just about. So it's got small faint lines on the aperture blades. Lines that are from use are usually fainter than oil. Oil is kind of shiny and liquidy looking. So what will eventually happen is if you have oil on the aperture blades, it will eventually make its way onto the glass and you'll get very hazy looking pictures. Now this lens is an example of an ugly lens, just for the simple reason that apart from the cosmetics and the fact that it's had a bit of use there, it's actually really hard <laughs> to turn the manual focus ring. So in order to get that fixed, someone would have to take it completely apart and re-lubricate it. In fact, it takes more than just a little bit of effort to, to do that. Oh, that was a good workout. So that is a not so great lens. And to be quite honest, getting that serviced would probably cost a fair bit of money between the aperture blades and the manual focus ring. Here's one somewhere in the middle. This actually has very clean aperture blades. The aperture is so tiny because it's a wide angle lens that you probably won't be able to see that. But the thing to listen to is the sound of the focusing. Now, focusing should be smooth. If it's a bit dry, you'll be able to hear it. I'm going to hold the lens to the microphone for a second, just so you can hear the sound. So that sounds a little bit like someone sweeping the carpet or the floor when you turn the manual focus ring. What you really want is a nice smooth movement when you're moving the focusing. It's not the end of the world if it's a loose focus ring. If you are quite happy to have a loose focus ring, then of course that's completely fine. But if you are doing very fine focusing and the focusing ring moves on its own, that's a bit frustrating, particularly if you're uh, shooting film rather than digital with these lenses. So main things to look for are optics and dust, manual focus ring, and the aperture mechanism. Obviously you wanna make sure you can mount it on a camera, obviously, you also want to make sure that you can put a filter on the front of it and that there's no dents and dings on there. But apart from that, that's all you need to know. The other thing I wanted to show you, which is sometimes quite hard to spot, is fungus. So this is not a manual focus lens. This is actually an AF lens that has fungus in the back of it. But it shows up as small spiderwebby 
kind of uh, areas and sometimes it's quite severe and it can cover a large area of the glass and sometimes it's quite tiny and you have to be careful for it. This lens actually has a larger blob of fungus near the back and then when you're looking further into the lens with the flash you can see an even smaller bit of fungus that's beginning to grow so that would need attention quite quickly in order to make sure it doesn't spread but it's worth looking out for. In summary what you're looking at is cosmetics, optics, manual focus ring and aperture mechanism. Some aperture mechanisms have a more definitive click than others but as long as the aperture is working that's the main thing. So cosmetics, optics, manual focus ring and aperture ring and that should do it. How's that?